Welcome to Peggy's Tropical Garden, coming to you from the Florida Keys. Hi, I'm Peggy. Thanks for joining me today. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about is the Scandapsis pictus. Um, these plants are some of my favorites. They have become very popular along, among the plant community and becoming more available. In case this is a plant that you've been considering picking up or you've just purchased one and you're not sure about the care or you'd like, just like to learn a little bit about it, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk all about the Scandapsis pictus. Now, first thing is pr the pronunciation. I, for one, have been calling these plants Scandapsis ever since I purchased my first one. And in doing research for this segment, I learned that I've probably been pronouncing the word wrong. I do now indeed believe that it is correctly pronounced skindapsis. And the reason for that is the Greek term skindapsos um, means upon the trunk of trees. And also in my research, I learned that these are climbing plants from Southeast Asia, and they do indeed climb upon the trunks of trees. So I believe that it is skindapsis as opposed to syndapsis. However, if you're like me, I learned the, um, the names of my plants just so that I can do care research. Other than that, I'm not real hung up on what the names are. So if you're pronouncing it syndapsis, we won't sue you, okay? <laughs> so what we'll first talk about is just give you a little insight on the plant. Now, these plants typically have a somewhat matte green leaf as you see here, with a silvery gray variegation. All varieties, of the, uh, all varieties of this plant have that in common. Now, one thing with these plants that have caused great confusion is being able to distinguish the difference between a syndapsis argraeus, exotica, and silvery ann. We'll start with the silvery ann. As you can see here, this plant has matte green leaves with a degree of silver gray variegation. Some of the leaves are more than half covered with that silvery gray and others are more green. And also I wanna mention the leaf size. You see the size of the leaves. They're in line with, I would, say, I would call that a small to medium sized leaf. Now, this Scandapsis exotica, on the other hand, has, let me turn this around for you, some rather large leaves, as you can see. And they have the matte green and the silver. However, you will notice that they all have, down the center is a green trail right down the center, and that's on all the leaves. Now you will see that some of these leaves are primarily gray, but none of them are primarily green, and they all have the green down the center. So when I show you the Silvery Ann and the Exotica, the difference is very apparent. The leaves of the Silver Ann are much smaller the, there is no green down the center. There you go. Now, you've got those two straight, no problem, right? Well, of course there is. The Argraeus. <laughs> now this one, again, has the matte green leaf with the, um, has matte green leaves with the grayish, silver variegation, but if you notice, these leaves are all primarily green. And then they have the gray silver in a spattered pattern. And like the Exotica, they have the green down the center. So I'm going to give you a look at the Argraeus next to the Exotica. Now the leaves on the Argraeus are um, about the same size as those of the Silvery Ann, 
making them much smaller than the leaves on the Exotica. And they both do have that green down the center. But the Argraeus definitely has a more patterned um, silver gray variegation in that it's just speckles, whereas the other two have much higher degrees of variegation. Okay, so now you should be able to tell the three of those apart fairly easily. Once you learn what the difference is, it's easy to tell the difference. They're not as similar as they seem um, before you learn how to, you know, distinguish them. Some of the care. Um, in terms of temperature, these plants prefer temperatures between 65 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they can live at temperatures, you know, a little higher than that, a little lower than that, but I'm going to show you what happens when they end up in temperatures that are a little cold for them. They do not like drafts at all. I made the mistake of moving this Argraeus um, and I put it in an area that it was in the direct line of my AC draft, um, vent. And this is what happened to my leaf. You see that, how it gets that dark spot? Had I not moved that, I would have ended up with dark spots on several more of my leaves. I have had a plant of uh, skindapsis that ended up with lots of leaves like that, but um, it gives you some indication. Most plants will let you know what they need and what the problem is. You just have to learn the habits of that plant. And this plant, like I said, will definitely let you know if it doesn't appreciate the temperature. Um, like I said, 65 to 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit is what it prefers in, in um, conditions that it will thrive. In terms of light, it likes it likes bright light, indirect bright light. If you put this in direct sun, you'll burn the leaves. The leaves are tend to be very thick, but they do burn easily if you put them in the indirect sunlight. So this is not something that you would want if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. You would not want this in a south-facing uh, south window at all. They do like the bright light. If you do not give your plant enough light, your leaves will turn primarily green. Your variegation, your gray-silver spots or gray-silver pattern on your leaves will begin to fade. It will disappear if your plant is not getting enough light. So if you have a skindapsis and the leaves are primarily green, you need to give your plant more light. In terms of watering, now this is a tricky situation all the way around. I don't like to tell anyone how frequently to water a plant because without knowing your soil mix, there's really no way anyone can tell you how frequently you should water a plant. I can tell you the conditions that the plant likes, but even that is, you know, it can vary. If, of course, if you have a very fast draining soil, you're gonna have to water more than someone who has a soil that reta retains more moisture. In my research, I read that these plants prefer to be consistently moist, to remain the soil. They like for their soil to remain consistently moist during a great, during the growing season. I'm sorry, I'm having, I'm getting so tongue tied today. But it said that they um, enjoy consistently moist soil during their growing season. Now that has not been what I have found, or at least what I do. I do let mine tend to grow out pretty, um, dry out pretty much. I water my plant when my moisture meter is between two and three in the dry area. I am scared to let these remain moist because they don't like wet feet and it is easy for the roots to rot. And for this, those reasons, I do tend to let mine dry out a little bit before I water them. But like I said, the research that I did find um, in more than one place was saying that they like to be consistently moist during their growth season. So you will probably have to play with yours, with your watering to find out exactly what, you know, given your climate and everything your plant likes. 
Another thing is humidity. These plants do like between uh, 50 and 60% humidity. Um, if you are not in an area that is very humid, you're growing this in your house and it's rather dry in there, you would probably want to run a humidifier or you might want to give it a pebble tray, a humidity tray. And that's just a shallow tray with some pebbles in it and some water and you set your plants on it and the plant will get the humidity from that. But they do enjoy having some humidity um, versus a dry environment. Fertilizer. In terms of fertilizing, I simply use miracle Grow. I know a lot of you say, oh my goodness, not the dreaded miracle. Yes, I use miracle Grow. I use the powdered form that is water soluble. I mix that up at a half strength, half of the recommended strength. And I do give that to my um, skin dapsis. See, I'm getting ready to say skin dapsis again. Um, I give that to my skin dapsis at least once a month. Now, I know some of you say, you know, I've never fertilized my plants, and I have definitely been that person. There was a time when I never fertilized my plants, but I can say that I have definitely seen a difference now that I do fertilize my plants on a schedule. You have to consider when plants are growing in the wild, they are getting certain nutrients and stuff from the earth that they're growing on, from the trees that they're climbing, etc. When they're in a pot, they're not getting that. The only nutrients that they're getting is that from your soil. And from watering your plants' nutrients, excuse me, the soil's nutrients, there's a fungus gnat flying around here and it's driving me nuts. But as your plants are watered, the nutrients are depleted unless you do decide to fertilize your plants. So I do fertilize once monthly at half strength using miracle Grow. Propagation. These plants are so easy to propagate. They are right there. You do them exactly like you would a pothos. But in case you're not familiar with either plant in terms of propagation, you simply want to take a cutting that's about four inches in length. Um, you will want to have a node on that cutting. I would trim the leaf away from the node. You can um, stick it in some water or into some damp sphagnum moss. And these plants root rather quickly. You would probably be seeing roots within three or four weeks. So just that easy um, to propagate. So I hope that you have found this video helpful in some manner. And if you do not yet own a skin dapsis, what are you waiting for? They're wonderful plants, easy to grow. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this plant to a plant growing novice at all. They're, they're just easy going plants. So if you have any further questions, uh, I will be more than help, happy to try my best to answer them. Otherwise, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. I'm sure that some other viewer, if I'm not able to answer, that they will have the answer for you. It's all about working together to keep things growing. So thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure having you with me. I do appreciate you. Take care and bye-bye.